Hello, my name is Roman and I am from the Customer Success Team at QuickNote. For the past three years, it has been our mission to deliver fast, reliable, and affordable data to the Solana community. Whether you are a trader, a DEX, or just a regular enthusiast, our new tool, QuickNote Streams, is here to deliver a solution for you. Traditional WebSockets have been a big issue in the Solana community and the ecosystem overall. As we all know, WebSockets often disconnect, resulting in you to needing to reconnect the WebSocket and reconnect the data. This could cause downtime, which is inefficient if you are running a dApp or even a trader. Our new tool, QuickNote Streams, is here to solve that. With auto retries, we are able to auto reconnect to a webhook. In addition, this tool is also great in the form that we have filters. Something that a traditional WebSocket does not have is when you are pulling data from a block, you are getting the whole raw payload of all the data inside of a block, which means you have to process it on your end. What filters does here with streams is it allows you to filter for any specific data that you are looking for within a block. This means that you can save time, you can save money on requests, and you can get your data a lot more accurately. QuickNote Streams also gives you the option to backfill data. If let's say if you are just looking to build on Solana or you are looking to build a specific product where you need historical data and all the data within a chain, you are able to backfill it via streams. It will be a lot faster and more cost effective and you could also filter for any specific data sets that you're looking for within this. In this video, we'll be going over a quick demo on how QuickNote Streams works and how fast, easy it is to set it up. The first thing you need to do is you need to create a QuickNote account. You could use Streams on our free account or you could choose to create to our business or our build plan. Here, when I go to, I'll be going to Streams and I'll be creating a stream. Now, the first thing I'll be doing is I'll be selecting my chain, which here will be using Solana and I'll be using Mainnet in this specific case. Now, QuickNote Streams allows you to either select blocks or programs plus blocks but for this specific case, we'll be getting the, all the data within a specific block. You have the option to change your stream names or you can keep it generic. Um, so here, for example, just for the purpose of the test, I will put Solana 24. As of right now, we only have the region of US East available. However, in the near future, we will have other regions available, which will improve your latency based on where you're from. Uh, lastly here is we have batch size. So if you're planning to stay at the tip of the chain, we do advise that you keep the batch size to one. However, QuickNote Streams is also very useful if you are planning to backfill. In Streams, you have the option to filter for specific blocks or you could stay at the tip of the chain. So for example here, I could choose to read get data from Genesis block to, for example, say block 1000. Or uh, as we will be doing in this case, we'll just be going from any blocks moving forward. And here we have two options. So we have stream the raw payload, which is essentially all the data in the block. This is also useful, you know, if you just want straight up data, using filters is not necessary. So if you just want all the data coming in within a block, um, you could use this option as well. But for this specific test, we will be modifying the payload before streaming. In this test, we will be getting all the new token pools created on Radium. Here, I'm just going to run a quick test just to show you what it looks like if you have the straight filter going. Um, now, this may take a second because there's a lot of data within a Solana block. When you're looking to edit this, you're looking for main function, filter logic, and return statement. So as we see here, when we ran this test, we got a lot of data. And this is just an example of a raw payload. Now, for this specific test, we already have a filter created on our end. So we will be running a quick uh, test just to show you how exactly it will look. Okay, great. So as you see here, it says your filter did not return any data. This is actually expected. And what this basically means is there were no pools being created in this certain block. Now, I have a block handy on me, which I know does have a certain um, creation of pools. So I will basically plug it in here for the test. And then I will run the test again and you will be able to see the difference. Great. Now, if you scroll down here, we will be able to see all of the pools which are created within this specific block. Now, moving on next, uh, we have latest block delay and restream uh, on reorg. Latest block delay is only available on our growth plan and essentially allows you to create a certain delay for when blocks are generated. So for example, let's say you want to receive uh, your QuickNote streams data 10 blocks after the most recent block is completed. This is a great way to do it, or as well as reorgs. Sometimes reorgs happen on Solana, um, and basically what will happen is if a reorg does occur, it will restream that data with the reorg to you. Now we'll be going next. Here you will have a destination. Since I'm currently on the free plan, I only have access to web, webhook. However, if you are on, our, on a, one of our higher tiers, you'll have access to webhook. 
S3 storage, Postgres SQL, and Snowflake. For this demo, I will be using Webhook. Um, great. Here, I will be getting a quick webhook via this website. And I will be posting my webhook here. Great. Now, moving forward, uh, so I will keep the payload compression as to none, and I will keep the header to none as well for this specific test. The great thing about streams is we also have specific parameters. You know, one of the big what problems with websites is to disconnect. And here, this is the kind of solution that we have for it. So here we have a timeout, which happens, I will put, for example, I will keep every 30 seconds. And then for the retry, I will do, for example, uh, for every 10 seconds, I will do a retry. And, and then I'll pause the stream after three, three, three retries if the data is not being delivered. When it comes to retries, this is the number of retries you want your stream to perform if there is a problem with your destination or your webhook. And here I will send the test destination request. And you're able to see here, I have received the request foobar. And it's as simple as creating a stream. So this could hypothetically could be done within 30 seconds um, for the purpose of the demo is to take a little bit more time. But this basically is here to showcase of how quickly you're able to access on-chain data. So here, as you can see, the stream is currently running, um, where it is streaming real-time blocks until staying at the tip of the chain. And if you go to your webhook here, you're able to see the request coming in. So for example, this one, this block did not have any uh, pools being created. So here, for example, this does have a return data. And if you want to look at it at a more fancy here, uh, more fancy state of view, you click JSON, and this is the data that is returned to you via streams. If you go to our metrics tab too, you're also able to see real-time data of how this works. So for example, you're able to see the total amount of data that you consumed, total blocks, total webhook requests, uh, throughput, etc. To help you quickly get started on streams, all of our resources will be linked below. Happy building.